Our next guests are going to be drowning in whiskey today. They'll die trying to survive this episode, but there'll be no surviving. Let's welcome Pete and RJ, sit on six, to Metalhead Whiskey Snobs. Today we're drinking Wilderness Trail Bourbon, 50% ABV, 100 proof. Let's pop the cork. All right, guys, today we're drinking the Wilderness Trail. Let's get a nose on it and see what we all think. Smells like whiskey. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Stop it. I actually really do. Very sweet and easy on the nose for a 100 proof whiskey. Hopefully, it translates to the palate. Really? Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah. That does not burn like a hundred. No, that does not burn like a hundred. Uh, There's a reason why it's a ranked whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a little peppery on the back end, but it doesn't not much heat at all. What is you guys' regular, normal go-to drink, man? What, what kind of whiskey do you normally sip on? Oh. <laughs> so, so I don't know. We found this in the bathroom. <laughs> not this, but what I drink. <laughs> as far as the whiskeys go, I lean bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a bourbon dude. I don't care much for scotches or the, the, single malts. The, the good ones are nice. It just it, it it's too much of a quest for me right now to learn the good ones right, dude. when I know I can get no. a nice bourbon. It's oh, this is dangerous. Like I was like, it's so smooth. There's no bite. And it was, I think that is like my favorite, one of my favorites. You know, oh, the double oak, yeah. The or double oak. Was it the double oak? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, we like the heavy proof bourbons as well. But you know, sometimes you will get a. A good low proof bourbon, a good, you can find good 80, 80 proof bourbons, no problem at all. Yeah, when they came out with that one, I was like, turned my wife onto it, and she's like, oh, yeah, this is good. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she's like, I'm white clawing, and I was like, yeah, I quit switching gods. I can't keep <laughs> up with you. Great to get have you guys here. RJ, personally, how does it feel to be uh, running a band that's really taken off in the Denver scene right now? Honestly, I, I, I gotta be honest, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, this is the first band, the only band I've ever been in. Everybody in my band knows everybody in the scene, damn near, been in it longer than I've even lived in Colorado, and I've been here for over 20 years. Uh, you must play with some really old motherfuckers. Uh, yeah, we're, they actually call us Dad Rock, and at first everybody was like, ah. Uh, you know what's but you know what? We Grand Dad love Rock. It. I, Absolutely love it. I've met so many great people. I'm inspired by everybody. It doesn't matter how old or how young they are. So much talent here. Absolutely. And I'm just, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Yeah, Denver scene definitely blossoms with that with musicians from all ranges and styles. Dude. So much talent. Oh yeah. Right on, man. So Pete, what, what do you think is your personal favorite show that you played with Sit on Six so far in your career, man? Oh, uh, we, we were lucky enough to open for Sebastian Bach at the Gothic. Dude, hell yes. That, that house was packed. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we had a little bit to do with that. We didn't have it. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not going to claim to be have Sebastian's crowd, but oh my gosh. So you brought all the guys, Sebastian brought the <laughs> Yes, that's, that's exactly how that went. And and we, we won't go too much farther with that. But um, oh my god, no, I mean, it, oh, both levels of the place were packed. The lights were great. The sound was great. The band, the other bands were cool. Um, and dude, he's a legend. It, I mean, it's a bucket list. Drawing. It was motivating, but it, it was intimidating at first. But as soon as Caesar's just like, fuck it. You were like, oh yeah, we're on. Boom! Like, we just lit them up. Yeah, man. I wasn't, I wasn't in attendance, but I do see some footage of that one. And it looks like, yeah, people going. Well, that was a fun night. That's that awesome. was definitely a fun night. Oh, yeah. So, RJ, as a vocalist, dude, like, uh, what, where do you think you pull a lot of your inspiration from, man? What do you, who, do you, uh, who do you try to kind of, you know, emulate and base your style on? Well, I'm the youngest in the band. Um, that doesn't mean shit anymore because we're called Dad Rock. So I'll be 43 next month. But So I grew up, high school was the grunge era. So, And I'm originally from northwest of Seattle. So oh, cool. I grew up with Nirvana, like them or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't pick where you're from or what you listen to. Right, right, right. So, Sound like Nirvana so, back in the beach insecticide. Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely love Sully Erna. Big. I, I went into the Army when Godsmack came out right after I graduated in 97. Mm -hmm. Love Sully. Love uh, LJ from Seven Dust. Dude, one of my boys, man. Um, my favorite album to the day is still fucking Alice in Chains Unplugged. 
to the day. I mean, I, I can't find anything that can that can compete with that. Um, for me personally, yeah, that's one of those ones that will send you. Out I mean, to it, it, it all around. So, yeah, there's harder, there's smoother, there's everything. But if you culminate it, <clears throat> that's that's got to be my favorite album. I would argue with that for one second. But honestly, I, I try to pull from everything. Like, I have a lot of diversity, uh, a lot of versatility, you know, and and, and, and influence. I, I grew up listening to oldies and old country. Uh, for my grandparents, um, I'll listen to jazz. I mean, it's just all over the place. So, I just, if it sounds good to me, it is good to me. Bring it. Absolutely. How about you, dude? So, oh, see, yeah, this is where I throw a wrench in everything. <laughs> I, I, I listen to a lot of, like, old-school 70s European prog rock. Wow! Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I don't I don't bring a whole lot of that influence to the uh, to uh, to the gig, but it's there. Definitely. What about tone wise? Ooh, ooh. If, if my, my perfect tone would be like if uh, if you combine the DNA of Geezer Butler, uh, Lemmy, and and John Entwistle into a into, <laughs> into, into into like one of them shakers that you make martinis. In. Three monstrous bass players. For this, so I cannot uh, can't be mad at that answer at all. And, and again, that I mean, it just kind of. I, I date myself with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> so the other two boys ain't here. Randy and CJ. We love them anyway. Hey, you know, we'll let them slide on this one. They got bad. But uh, they got a history, right? I mean, they, 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 they've been, they've known each other for a real long time and even played in bands previous to In and out of a few bands. So yeah, so let's hear, let's hear the history behind that. So apparently, oh shit, I was supposed to study for this. <laughs> That's why we need one of them. You can make it up your story, we'll so, be better. We didn't study either, so... so let's CJ and Randy have known each other for a long time, like probably close to 20, if not more years. They've been in and out of a few bands. The only band that I, I remember the name of was Broken. Um, that was recent. I'm still trying to remember the other band members' names, but they've always kept in contact with each other. So when I came into this, even, even for my audition, I was like, Oh, I can't do this. This is intimidating as shit. <laughs> Seriously. And I mean, we've heard a lot of talent out here, but you could definitely tell those oh, guys, guys have are locked known in, each man. other. Yeah, they're locked in, dude. They've known each other. They've been around. They know so many people. Yep. And I was just like, damn, this is a whole different level of, I got to step up. I got I to gotta figure something out. You know? <laughs> Should we get off the puck? There's a lot of talent to walk into. It was, it was very overwhelming and intimidating. In fact, uh, I had to do one cover, I had to do Paranoid. And I felt bad, this is how bad it was. I was like, uh, I don't know all the words. It's hard. Either, I know the fuck. Either is Aussie, okay. exactly. either is Aussie. I mean, get, it out your, get, it, get it out of your system. You'll have it. But I didn't know the words verbatim, I just knew the song. I grew up with that song. I, I remember people building bikes in the garage and listening to this song. So when I went home and studied it to come back for the thing, I, I, I promise you, every bit of Sully that I had in me for influence <laughs> came out for that, and it, it, it works. It was it worked. Oh, it, yeah. it was all right. I was like, all right. Speaking of man, you guys, uh, where, where are you guys at? Are you writing new material? Do you have anything coming up that maybe uh, you know we should be talking about here? We are the greatest procrastinators of getting this first fucking album. I, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's entirely true. See, procrastinating implies that you're not doing anything. The, the problem we have is is someone calls our drummer and says, hey, we got 12 gigs. So how many can you do? Our drummer says, we can do 13. Oh, goodness. Yeah, but it's like stacking up charges when you get pulled over. Right, it's exactly. Like, There's 13 against you, but only about one or two are going to stick. So that's where we get our shows. All right, man. Just cheers to you guys and sit on six. There we go. After that nice little pour of whiskey, and you get that shit of horns up, little horns down. Horns up, up all the way. That was good stuff. So you guys got a video of uh, Salt Lost Surviving? Right? Oh yeah. Right. Did you guys record that with? It, here in his place. <laughs> in, right. the, in the warehouse? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that with uh, what, Hannah and, uh, and Heartsick Heroin. Yeah. <laughs> That's why there's only two here. Uh, <laughs> I told you they want me to do porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, he even moved all the dead bodies. <laughs> For most of the dead bodies. Most so. of the dead bodies, 100 loads. What, do you, what shows do you guys have coming up? And uh, what do you have going on in the future? Oh, come on. 
You, the bass player never talks. Nothing. That's because he's just on my jaws thrown at him. We're not gonna say where from where. But I only threw one once. I didn't sniff that one. <laughs> Next show is saliva. What's the date? August 11th at the venue. Hell our yeah. favorite bit. Our favorite with venue. Purge the Heritage. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> show after that, Buck Cherry. With Driven by Turmoil, we'll be opening up the festivities for that one. Driven by Turmoil, we just put them to bed last week. Yes, we did. They need the rod. We got to talk. <laughs> he wasn't here, man. He but he he will uh, he will have surely heard about this. We're gonna talk twice. <laughs> I swear to God, stick with us. There is an album coming. I promise. Hell yeah. Let's go sit on six full length. The check is in your mouth. I won't come in the mail. <laughs> right on. Well, this wraps up our episode for today, everybody. Go check out Sit on Six on social media. Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time. We love you, Center Nation. Fuck out of here, guys. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. ah, 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 ah. I bet he blames that white claw on his wife, and he's really the bitch. <laughs> 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 <laughs>